Hi guys, in this video I am going to work some more with the image trace that we've already started in the last video. The last one was pretty basic, you know, taking you through, showing you where things were, how to break things down in color, where recolor was, um, how to use the eyedropper tool if you wanted to do that, and also please be aware of being able to go back in and redraw and manipulate shapes. Just because the computer breaks it down for you, um, doesn't mean that it's what you want, you know, so be very aware of that and don't settle just for what the computer gives you. Get back in and manipulate it. It's just kind of a springboard to get you started if you even use the image trace tool. Um, very often, you know, you can bring an image like this and then put a layer on top of it, lock this one, and just start drawing yourself and tracing it. Um, so, hold on, well, sorry about that, we got messages coming through, but I'm just going to roll through it. Um, so, with this, I'm going to select this and get started, but I want to show you that I used what we had been doing in Photoshop before. Remember with Select a Mask, I selected it out of an image, and now what I'm going to do is I've copied it and I've pasted it into here. So the next thing is, is to image trace. And so remember here, um, we could do this and convert the image oops, into image trace as you see if we hover. If you don't have it here, your properties in the version you're working on, remember, can be across the top. If you still don't see it for some reason, um, object and image trace is right there. And so all you do is hit make. Now, when this happens, remember, don't freak out because this is just a default to what one of the options is, which is called a um, black and white logo. Um, and so you should have a panel over here. I've been playing around on mine, so it's disappeared. Um, and you should have one up here when you're on image trace. But if you do not have it for some reason, um, I deleted mine out a while back, um, you can always go to the window. Remember, I've told you anything that you've lost in terms of a panel or something like that, I'm gonna go, oh, there it is, image trace, and poof, it's right back where you need it. So here we are, default, which is going to be, like I said, the black and white logo. Um, we can play around like this. If you like this one, I may play around with, go to sketched art, looks pretty much the same, don't you think? It's a little bit lighter in line. Oh, I kind of like that one. Um, let's see, let me try something else. Uh, there's also silhouette, and that would be great if you wanted just to clip a shape to that or an image to that kind of organic shape. But let's see, with the threshold, can take it down a little more, keep playing, something along those lines. Then also too, you can play around in the advanced panel where you want less paths, which is great. You can see it's kind of taking some of them away. Um, corners, you can soften corners through here, have more corners, whatever it is you need to do. Um, so I mean, these are things to, to think about, but there's that, and so I've got the paths down. We've got colors down to one, um, and that's because it's a black and white, obviously. So let me do something. Let's see. Mm, okay. Let me just go back to um, Sketch Art, and that way you don't have to sit and watch me play around with this. But I'm going to do something like this. Maybe go to Advanced, more paths. I don't really want more paths. Add more memory. So. Okay, so let's say this is it. I've decided I want to go with this. But like I said, guys, um, let's minimize that. You know, this is what the computer is going to give us, but it isn't always what you might want. So please remember, you can manipulate it after you expand it. Um, you will have expand over here sometimes. If you can't find it, once again, object and expand. And remember what that does is that it assigns anchor points, which we were just playing with, um, and paths. So that way, it will become a vector drawing that you can manipulate. So I'm going to hit expand and object fill. Okay. And now take a look. We can come in. I'm going to zoom. And so with B, which is our selection tool. And then remember, direct selection is the white arrow. And let me go do this direct selection. You can select this area is all one. The, these are all separate areas, as you can see that we can manipulate with um, the selection, direct selection tool, and zero, and when you hit selection, which is the shortcut was V, which I just did, 
it selects it all and so you can take a look over here and it's grouped that's the reason when you select it with this that um, it all selects together but these are actually as you can see through our direct selection and this is going to be important in a little bit um, that they all and in are individual okay so V back to selection now what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to recolor this so what's going to happen is I go into recolor and I'm like okay it's black um, got my grays come down here and I play around and it's grayscale so then I click on this and let's say I even grab a color in here and I hit OK and then I hit OK and it's still because it's black and white and it was set to black and white in the actual fill um, it's not allowing me to so all you have to do is select it go to fill add any color you want just choose one of these out of here um, let's hit red and now what I can do is obviously I can go over here and play around as well and this is fine when you just have one color you're working with you know you can just kind of do this um, also but here's recolor right here opens this up for you again and you can play around with hue and saturation as well so you go into a different color family come down here in terms of the black added and so I can just play around and me lighten it up a little it's getting a little heavy that's a beautiful color okay that's periwinkle let's stick with this periwinkle color I really like this one so I hit OK and so that's a way around of getting in and being able to put color in there um, so if you go to immediately go to recolor to do that and it doesn't let you just realize don't forget it's just a fill as well so you can go back into your fill and then adjust accordingly so now I have this and you know these abstracted um, images can be something really beautiful to work with you know in terms of maybe writing out a logo or your, you know lettering your fonts but don't forget also what I just had said is that this is just what the computer gave me and I can come back in and manipulate any any area of this I'm, I feel that I need to so what I might do is let me hit V um, let me select it and then let's start here and this curvature tool is pretty awesome and so as soon as you hit an anchor point on here it would allow me to manipulate curves I actually could bring one even out like this if I wanted I don't want but um, so same thing here what I might want to do is connect this one into here and try to connect some of these and take that curvature pull it into here and then this one Maybe do something like that, open it up, and then select this one, bring it down, bring this one down, and I can add one. I don't want to do that. Now what I might do is shift C. Remember that tool? Remember this guy? And then I can bring this in and manipulate the line. Also, you can manipulate handles with that one, remember? So, um, play around like that. Maybe I want to bring this in a little more there. And then just kind of work myself around the image. And I can redraw. So what I can also do is collect or select this, grab in, which is the pencil tool. And maybe draw into these. Also, to select this um, and in and in works good pencil tool when I'm coming up and maybe doing something like that, um, or and you can't use it until you select it. So once you selected the object, then maybe come in and do something along those lines, and then Shift C again, and so on and so on, and you can work yourself around that and play 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 that's I mean you know like I said don't just rely on what the computer gives you very rarely is it exactly what you're going to want it to be and then also too don't forget there is the smooth tool which we find in the pencil tool that you could come back in and so all those tools we've already been using I mean still continue to use them um, to make this image exactly what it is you want when you're done so let's say I've worked myself around and I've gone through here and this is what I want. 
you know, that's a way to manipulate. So don't forget, you don't have to settle. This thing right here, now I've already hit selection, so I'm just going to keep selecting it until that is the only one selected. And that's called isolation, and you can see that I'm in isolation mode. I have this red that goes across the top. I'm just going to hit delete, then just click away, and I'm out of isolation mode. So whatever it may be that you want to do, please, what I'm trying to get across to you is that you can continue to manipulate this in any way. Um, this is where also, if you have this paintbrush tool, what I can do is kind of come in here as well. And let's say I wanted to do something like that. Um, the blob brush tool is another one. I know, great name, huh? Um, come in, something along those lines. Now, what's the difference between the paintbrush and the blob brush? Look at that. That's a path, correct? You can see it um, inside. You see this line here, and it's you know curvature tool. We could still manipulate it however we want to. We bring this in. But if you look over here, where did I draw it? There it is. I'm going to select this, and it's actually an object, not a path. If you notice, it's a shape. And so the blob brush creates shapes, which is pretty awesome. Um, and right here, and so then I can come back in and draw all over that and select it, and you can see it's connected it to that one, and so on and so on. So now with Shift-C, I could come in and make this line thinner through here and it might be easier to manipulate when you grab the handle to do that. Same thing here, maybe make it thinner here, play with this handle. So that blob brush and that paint brush are really great, um, but this isn't an object that you can play with. Now what you could do is go to object and expand the appearance and now it's been assigned to that. So, but the blob brush does that for you from the beginning. So just to show you that also. And that's how you can go back in and play and manipulate and reshape things how you want to. Um, so I'm gonna take this now. I'm gonna delete that part out. And, um, but I kinda like that. But back to the blob brush one more time. I'm gonna zoom in and here it is. And just go through, I want to fill that in. Like I said, I'm going to select that, zoom back in. I want to fix this here. A couple things. I might just go to the smooth tool first. Try to make that happen a little through here. And smooth that out. Maybe grab my curvature tool, select that anchor point, move it in. So now it's a little bit more befitting to the kind of curves of the drawing that the computer gave me. Okay, so that is that. And so work your way around that way. Now what I'm gonna show you is that you can actually take this shape and clip an image to it as well, like we had done in Photoshop. Um, I've got this dahlia, so I'll pull this flower in. Now I'm gonna bring it in. I'm gonna hold the shift key while I make it bigger because if I don't, this can happen. Okay, so you don't want that. If you hold the shift key, then what ends up happening is it constrains the proportions of the height and width. And I'm now going to clip this image to this as soon as this train goes by. Um, so, <laughs> sorry about that, guys. Here it goes. It's almost done. Okay. Um, I'll just talk a little louder. Here we go. Um, so I have this. So if you remember in Photoshop, we would have a shape underneath the image and clip it and it would clip to the shape. So if you try that here, what I'm going to do is with my selection tool, I'm just going to kind of run it through this object and you're going to see it's going to select both of them. And for the clipping mask, if you just right click in Illustrator, make clipping mask, this is what's going to happen. It's going to tell you the top selected object must be a path compound shape. So what we're going to do is this. I'm going to select this, then hit right click and I'm going to tell it to arrange and send it to the back. Now in Illustrator this object you want the the object you're clipping it to to be on top or the shape you're clipping it to to be on top 
and then so I'm going to select this one. It's already selected, so to select more than one thing, I'm just going to hold the shift key and select the image, and you can tell that they're both selected. And also, they're on the same layer, so that's how you do this if they're on the same layer in Illustrator. Make certain that the image is behind the shape you want to clip it to. But look what's going to happen with this, because this isn't considered one object. Remember at the beginning I was showing you that it's grouped together but it is not one object. So if you do this and you try to make a clipping mask this is going to happen. It's very complex. Do you wish? Yes, this is going to happen. So what we need to do is one more step. Is to take this and like I said we know it's grouped because it says right here that it is. What I'm going to do is actually go down and make a compound path. And I'm going to do that, and when I make a compound path with this one, um, it's going to make them, it's going to merge it into one, like, just kind of organic object. So I'm going to hit Make. Now what I'm going to do is click this one, hold the Shift key, click this, right-click, Make Clipping Mask. Still says it's complex. Yes, I want to do it, and this is what I get. So that is how you can clip an image in Illustrator. So I hope these couple of things help you with your logo assignment as well um, as we go forward and just kind of learn some of the different tools in Illustrator. Okay, bye.